Marvel's Spider-Man 2 was easily one of the most hyped games of all time. You had promo material which showed the Spider-Men fighting Venom in the rainy streets of Manhattan. And I think that's a core reason why the game was disappointing. It's a great game that gives you great things that you just don't want at least for the most part. Disclaimer, all of what I'm about to get into is in spite of the Insomniac leaks, I tried to ignore them. Now, obviously to start, the story has a lot of problems. First and foremost are the protagonists. Now, for Peter, there's actually not a whole lot to complain about. I think it's kind of genius to say that no, after the first game in May's death, Peter's not just magically okay now, especially when he loses his only job at the very beginning of the game. The reason he becomes so addicted to the symbiote is because he knows in his heart that he could have prevented May's death in the first game if he had it. So he doesn't want to give it up in the second game when his sickly best friend returns if he knows it makes him a better Spider-Man. Even when he starts to lose his mind, his motivation is more altruistic than not. That's really good, until the boss fight with Miles where he loses the suit. Now obviously he has to lose the suit to create Venom, but the idea of the suit being an addiction is preceded by Peter breaking that addiction. And that can't really happen if Peter gets the anti-Venom suit. Now I get it, right? This is a video game, it'd be weird to just lock off half of a skill tree for story reasons. If anything, I'd make it so that using symbiote abilities makes Peter more aggressive to give consequences to this gameplay or something like that. But as it stands, the symbiote story is good as always, but it's hurt tremendously by being in a video game. As for Peter's relationship with Harry, it's extremely good. They actually have a pretty good chemistry, and when Peter blows Miles off for Harry, it's pretty believable. But I think they made Harry and Peter just too likable. Like, Peter had a little sass in the first game. He kind of talked back and had a little bit of edge to him. In this game, they made him really peachy keen to show the difference when he gets the symbiote. And Harry's no better. Just a hint of the symbiote changing his personality, aside from Dog and Craven, would have been pretty good. And I think the addiction metaphor also falls apart a little for Harry since, you know, he'll die without it. It's like saying a normal person's addicted to breathing. Also, if you're enjoying, please remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you. And then there's the other half of this game, Miles. I actually think that Miles has a better quality in writing, but there's just too little of him. A lot of his half is doing stuff for Peter or someone else. Helping his mom, tracking Black Cat for Peter, protecting MJ from Peter, and then getting captured, fighting Venom, whom he has spoken with twice. Like, I kinda like his relationship with Martin Lee. He didn't really talk about him at all in the last game, but I imagine that's because those feelings of anger are reignited in this game when he first sees him. And that's cool. Mr. Negative in himself is also a huge improvement from the last game. I wasn't super interested in his story in the last game, and his boss fights were bad, but both his fight and story in this game are very good in my opinion. Probably the parts of the game that are the least problematic, and it was a good way to give us anti-venom while also giving us closure to his story. But Miles just doesn't do much in this game outside of Mr. Negative and side content. It's not a huge deal, there's way bigger issues that we'll discuss soon, but still. The last protagonist I want to talk about is MJ. Obviously, I like that there are less of her segments, and they're a little bit more of a spectacle. It's weird watching her take down hunters, but her gameplay is improved, so it's fine, I guess. It's just disappointing. There's been a lot of talk about her character model looking worse, though. Some people say that. Others say, hey, you can't blame the actor. She just got surgery, blah, blah, blah. She just looks strange in a way that wouldn't have much to do with the actress. Her eye color is weird and different from the last game. Her skin looks weirdly really oily, and her hair is, like, also really oily. It's one thing if she was like this in the first game, but she looks incredibly different from her old model. And all three of those things probably had very little to do with whatever surgery the actress had. She doesn't look ugly. She looks unpolished or unfinished. But her little Fourier scream is actually one of my favorite moments of the entire game, so that makes up for it. I guess. It's just disappointing. And one of the big disappointments of this game, the villains, Craven and Venom. They just shouldn't be in the same game with the style that Insomniac uses. Insomniac likes to have one main villain, and then that person takes the backseat for the real main villain, usually one that is close to Peter or Miles. In the first game, it was Mr. Negative and then Doc Ock. In Miles Morales, it was basically Simon Krieger and then Tinkerer. In this game, it's Craven and then Venom, but their stories are very intertwined. We'll start with Craven. First of all, this just isn't Craven as a character. Craven would not have an army of, you know, thousands of hunters that are expertly trained. Also, it's just not reasonable that both Peter and MJ have never heard of him. Realistically, he has probably billions of dollars worth of, you know, robot animal technology, weaponry, gunships, jet skis, and armor for all of his soldiers. This guy would be a genuine global superpower who could overtake small countries and probably large ones too, and he's fighting Spider-Man. And losing. I know the symbiote's powerful, but... 
come on. It's the Arkham Knight problem of a superhero or heroes fighting a military. It's cool, but it pretty distinctly separates that superhero from their more classic characteristics. Some of his hunters speak Simkarian, and MJ and Peter were just in Simkaria. I know they would have heard about this guy, especially if they're in cahoots with Silver Sable, who, by the way, would have been perfect in this game, but whatever. It's just disappointing. But I do think it's cool how consistent Craven is. This is a guy that lives for the hunt, and he's like that from when he shows up to when his head is bitten off by Venom. I just wish Craven and his hunters were represented better on the gameplay side. Like, Craven's boss fights are probably the easiest in the entire game, especially the one with Venom. I don't think it would have hurt to make his fight a little more hard or intense. I mean, Lizard's more difficult than Craven, and his hunters are a bit of a joke. If reporter MJ, who spent a few weeks training with Sable, can take down hunters like it's nothing, something's not working. Look, I get it, right? This is a video game and there's gotta be a new enemy faction that wasn't in the last game. So I guess it gets a pass. And it also helps that you get more minor enemy types like the Sandmen and Cult of the Flame anyway. Although I don't really like the symbiote enemies, but that's just me. But more on Kraven himself, he's also just weirdly connected to the characters. Him and Miles don't even have a direct conversation a single time across the entire game. Keep in mind, he's our central focus for half of the runtime, if not more. And a character on the poster for the game doesn't even speak to him, despite being his prisoner for not a small chunk of the game. Venom's not that much better in this situation, but still. Honestly, if you want Kraven to feel cool, have Kraven fight Miles right after Martin Lee and beat Miles. Have the boss fight be unbearably hard and then make it easier for Peter to beat him because of the symbiote. That makes both the symbiote and Kraven feel more powerful. Additionally, Kraven just loses a lot of his mystique and coolness by having an army in general. He's not the respected hunter that's on par with superheroes and can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Spider-Man at his peak. He's just a really tough guy who happened to catch the Spider-Man off guard in this game. Miles could dog Kraven in a scripted cutscene and it wouldn't stretch anyone's belief. Also, and this is a bit of a side note, but Kraven's family and relationship with Chameleon also aren't very in-depth or even well done. Like, you hear about both in side missions and apparently Kraven's family ripped themselves apart while Chameleon is just being set up for the next game or DLC, which I guess is fine, but it's disappointing. And then there's the other main villain. Venom. Venom is also just not Venom in this game. Now, don't get me wrong, he looks great, sounds great, Tony Todd did a great job, but everything else about him is so antithetical to the character that it's a bit of a joke. Now look, you can always change certain aspects of a character or their lore to fit a story, but then the story has to be better for it. Why does Venom want to take over the world, and why does the symbiote wait until halfway through the game for that to become its motivation? Is there an actual reason Harry becomes Venom? I'm not saying it doesn't make sense, but there's a few different possible reasons why why he became Venom, and the game didn't feel like telling us which it was. Venom is at his best when he wants to kill Spider-Man or someone else. Taking over the world just isn't Venom's thing most of the time, and when it is, it doesn't work very well. He has wings in this, which is probably one of the coolest things I've ever seen, and his aura is definitely unmatched. And I get the idea behind Miles fighting him for half of the final battle, but the relationship the two characters have just doesn't work with the fight. I do not feel anything fighting Venom as Miles. But if Miles doesn't fight him, that means that Mr. Negative is one of the only story boss fights that Miles gets besides Peter. And Sandman, I guess. So now, you have to include him, even if it's a weird choice tonally. If you count every boss in the game, including Sandman, Peter gets six, while Miles gets four. It's not horrible, but... It's disappointing. Now, I think it's easy to assume in this video that I don't like this game, and that's not true. I like this game, but there's so much holding me back from loving it. The pacing's not great, it's mostly good, but there are a few times across the story where you can just feel that chunks were cut out. Like fighting Scream and then going to City Hall, I can near guarantee something else was supposed to happen between those two events. The villains are both made worse not only through each other's presence, but because they don't belong in an Insomniac-style Spidey game together. Miles doesn't even do enough in the game to fill in his half, for lack of a better term. Peter story is also made worse by being in a game, with the addiction metaphor failing from the anti-Venom stuff. And Venom himself isn't even that much of a villain in this game. I mean, you see him, what, three, four times before the final fight as Spider-Man? You don't have any arc or story with him. He becomes a villain, he goos up the city and a bunch of people, and then you fight him and all those people. And then the story is over. There's no, oh, what's Venom doing now? What's his plan? Maybe we can stop him before he accomplishes his goal. None of that. Doc Ock in the first game was a bit of a wild card. He frees all the villains and then he releases a contagion. He messes up the whole city. What's he doing now? Well, we find out he's sabotaging the water supply and the power grid you know, like a terrorist. And Peter has several encounters with him that build up the emotional beats of the final fight. There's none of that with Venom. 
like at all, what's Venom doing? I promise you, if you're asking yourself that question, he's either gooing people up or buildings up for the rest of the game. That is all he does aside from the scream scene. And even then, he's gooing someone up. That's it. That concept art of Miles and Peter chasing Venom through the city or the cinematic trailer of a fight in the street, those look cool. I think everyone wanted more of that. It's fine that we didn't get it, I guess, but it's kind of disappointing. Another side note, but there are also parts of this game that just didn't need to exist. And I know you can say that about any game, but why does the city get covered in goo towards the end? I know that little maneuver cost the studio at least a million dollars and it only lasts for like 30 minutes if that. The final fight takes place inside stages too, so you don't even really get to see the city. It's another case of I'm pretty sure there was supposed to be another mission or two during this segment. But I'm not going to beat around the bush. The gameplay is really, really good. The abilities for both heroes, the upgrades, the side missions are all weirdly really good except for the vulture ones. One thing that's weirdly lacking is probably the gadgets though. I don't see why we couldn't have gotten a couple more and just slotted them out like abilities. Same goes for the suits. Miles' side is clearly lacking in quality suits, and I think a lot of the ones from Spider-Man 1 definitely should have been ported over. If you ask me, if Peter's gonna get all the live-action suits, then Miles should get all the Spider-Verse ones, besides the classic red and blue, obviously. Like Noir and maybe 2099, and maybe throw in some of the TV show suits or something, I don't know. But I think the variants of the suits are really good, and ensure that even if you don't like a suit, a color variant can always change that. The traversal is a little un-Spider-Man. I get the idea behind having the web wings, and I think we can all agree that they're cool, but I probably use them more than actually actual web swinging simply for the fact that there's wind tunnels across the entire city. Like I think it would have been a little cooler if the wind tunnels didn't exist or if it was just over the one river because it's a long distance to glide but other than that it's still smooth and fun and fast. As for the open world stuff the vulture drones and the Emily May stuff is pretty consistently miserable but everything else is very good. The flame missions and Mysterio missions both offer terrific boss fights and a good foray into solo character work. It's a little lacking as an open world and this is a side note but something I miss from older games is just having having a menu or something where you can just do combat gauntlets and challenges. Like those endless runs from the Arkham games where you can get high scores and go for as long as your skill allows. I think this game could have benefited from that, but that's not a flaw. Speaking of combat, I think it's all smooth, but there definitely could have been more focus on different moves rather than just having a few new moves in the skills tree and then the rest of the skills just upgrade those moves. But the symbiote abilities and evolved venom abilities are all incredibly well done, and even though they again feel a little less Spider-Man, that doesn't take away from how much they are a blast to use, especially the symbiote surge. I don't know who came up with it, I don't know who said Peter should scream like he's getting pegged by MJ when I activate it, but it's by far my favorite part of the entire game. Anyway, the last issue I'd like to discuss is the Spider-Men in tandem. The biggest disappointment of the entire game is underutilizing the fact that there are two Spider-Men working together for the first time in a video game. There's been other games with multiple Spider-Men, but not like this. It's cool that you can meet up for random crimes, but take it a step further. Maybe the other Spider-Man comes in to assist with a side mission. Maybe he comes in to assist with one of the large hunter bases. This game is so dead set on keeping Peter and Miles separate. And that's cool for the parts of the story where they're supposed to feel distant and a little bit irritated with each other, but that's not like more than a few hours. Maybe a fifth of the game if that. And yet Peter and Miles barely ever work together. They have like three dual takedown animations, zero boss fights where they fight side by side aside from Sandman. and. In your wildest dreams you can include Venom. It'd be different if there was a co-op aspect of the game, but there's not. Be greater together is the tagline of this game. And to that I say, when? When can we be greater together? Anyway, I guess this game gets a 7.5 out of 10. It's got a lot of things going for it, like the graphics and how well it's optimized for PS5, and this game does have a ton of great villains in it to the point where I don't know what villains they'll have in the third one. But the story just falls apart under the lightest pressure. And the gameplay is amazing, but like I've said for most of this video, simultaneously, always slightly disappointing. Don't get me wrong, I still really like this game and absolutely can't wait for Insomniac's next entry in a few years. To call this bad is just incorrect. It's not bad at all, but to say that it matched the hype that people felt is also incorrect. And it's like that with a lot of games, sure, but I think there were extremely reasonable expectations of better suit distribution, more gadgets, a more filled in open world, and quality of writing and stuff like that that just weren't met, unfortunately. A 7.5 out of 10 feels right. And if it's your game of 2023, that's fine too. Anyway, if you enjoy reviews like these, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I definitely appreciate it. Or not, that's fine. Play nice, people.